Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to go over loops. There are basically two main types of loops, and we are going to go over the four today. When you think about life, how many loops we have in life, um, for example, when we have to sit down to eat, we sit down, have the food, hopefully you wash your hands ahead of time. Um, I, I'm not judging, I'm just saying. Um, you sit down, shove the food inside your mouth, Hopefully you're not speaking and spitting it all over the place because that's gross. But again, I'm not judging. I'm just saying. Um, finish your food. Put your plate away. Wash it. Next meal, same process. Wash your hands. Sit down. Eat. Don't spit the food out. Put your plate away. Wash it. Every single time. And we go over the same loop over and over. And when we think about life, life is a series of loops. Go to work. Go to the bathroom. All of these things we're doing over and over again. And when you think about how fundamental that is to life, that's also fundamental to programs. So all but the most simple programs, such as Hello World, is going to have some type of a loop in it. So just that's how important it is we got to keep that in mind, OK? So um, there are several different types of loops. There is a loop where you know how many you want to do, how many loops you want to go through. For example, um, dinner. Oh, I'm not dinner, but just meals. Let's say you know you're going to eat three meals a day every single day. So how many loops will we go through? Three every 24 hours, right? And some cultures, they eat five times a day, so they will go through five different types of loops. So when you know the number of times you want to go through the loop, that's when you actually use a for loop, okay? So let's begin. For int i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus okay that's the general syntax int or you can use var remember but we're using static typing i equals zero for for loops you pretty much use i all the time that's just standard so anytime you look at a for loop it's easy to spot oh they're using the variable i therefore it's a loop okay you could just tell by looking at it of course but that's just standard um i equals zero it goes up to 10. So the range is from 0 to, actually it's not 10, it's less than 10. So 0 to 9. And remember what I++ means? It means the number, 0, and then add 1 on top of it. Remember, if the plus was right here, it would be plus the, the number. This is the number, add 1 to it. OK? So if we print this out, I starts with 0 all the way to 9. So it loops through 10 times, right? So 0 to 9 as opposed to 1 through 10. Um, and it just prints it all out. That's the basic concept of it. So what can we be a little bit more creative? Well, of course we could. We could say int age equals 3. String name equals William. OK. So instead of an, um, uh, an integer, we can change this. We can change this into age. 0 to 2, OK? Because age equals 3. 0, it goes through loops through 3 times. You could also do name dot length. Remember, length returns an integer. So it would loop through that many times. So 7 is missing, so... William has seven characters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is this method is returning on the object of name. It's returning the number seven, so zero to less than seven or six, in other words. And it's adding on top of that. That's basically the, the uh, it in a nutshell. But let's go through a few other concepts themselves. Remember we talked about lexical scoping. How about if I print I here? It's not going to find it, undefined in name i, yet in the brackets, you could find it. So how is that significant? What if you wanted to create a number of different loops? Knowing that here, it deletes it after it goes out of the loop, the, the integer i, I'm sorry, the, the variable i, you can use it as many times as you want. So you can go through an infinite number of loops and use i every single time. That was, remember what I said, reusing? keeping the namespace clear, this is the perfect example, OK? In addition, the question, of course, might be, well, wait a minute, why don't you just talk about lexical scope after you did this? I think because it's easier to explain once we know the concept of lexical scope. I may be wrong, 
Sorry if I am. Um, in addition, for int, what if I want to have a loop within a loop? Okay, int i equals 0, i is less than 5, i plus plus. Is that allowed? I'm not getting any errors, so it probably is. Okay, so why is that? Well, remember, you're declaring the variable and then initializing it, and then you're going through a loop. But then you're going through a different set of brackets. So when you're redeclaring it within a new set of brackets, remember, you can do that. It'll be a separate variable. So you can redeclare it. As soon as it leaves the loop, though, it reverts back to the original. Because remember, if this was not, if you went like this, okay, then the i takes the value of this. Because remember, in the brackets, inner brackets, it can read the outer brackets, but the outer brackets can't read the inner brackets. So if we did this, this is completely different from this. Doing this, putting the int and redeclaring it, means that this is the whole new integer, but we're going to preserve this until we get out of the um, brackets. After we get out of these brackets, we resort, revert to whatever this value was right there. Okay? So that's how lexical scope helps you as well. So it doesn't matter how many loops you have, how many loops within loops within loops you have. So you could keep going down the line and use and reuse i equals zero or i equals whatever as a starting point as many times as you possibly can. So so that's the nice part, isn't it? So that was what what I was talking about um, when I said reuse the variables themselves, I think this makes a little bit more sense. Um, so one more thing about a for loop. So those are the basics. It's pretty straightforward. A couple more things, actually, let's go through. What if I wanted to add all of this? Let's just put this as 5. Make it nice and easy. What if I wanted to add all of the, the values from 0 to, let's make it 6. All the values between 0 to 6. How would I do that here? How would I add all of these together? Um, you can't just i equals i, because if you said i i equals 5, you can do that. So what's going to happen? It's going to say zero i equals 0. Okay, It's going to go through the loop, i equals 5, print i. It's going to loop around, it's going to add 1, and it's going to end there. Okay, what if I did something less than that? 2. Okay, i equals 0, then it changes to i equals 2, it'll print 2, it'll loop around, add 3, it'll change it back to 2, and it'll keep having a whole huge list of 2s. It's going to, just going to go endlessly, right? That is a problem. So you can't just use the i there, you probably have to use something like a counter out here. Again, lexical scope. What if I started right here and I declared a variable? As soon as I leave, then it goes ahead and deletes the value. So I'm going to have to say, for example, integer sum equals start out with 0. And then I don't want to print every successive add. I just want to print the very last value itself. And then here I will say sum equals sum plus i. Okay, so 0, sum will equal 0 plus 0. When, when it loops through, number 1, sum equals 0 plus 1. Loops through, sum equals 1 plus 2, and it keeps going on. And this will be print i, and it's given me an error y. Undefined named i, whoops, because it's supposed to be sum. That shouldn't be a problem because I declared it before the brackets. And I did not redeclare it, therefore it will look to here and say, oh yeah, I have this variable, which is an integer, and I'm going to be able to use it, and I'm going to be able to see it just because it was declared before. And we get 15. So 16 plus 6, no. 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 15. 
my math isn't that good. I'm going to trust the computer. Okay. Yeah, when they start taking over our lives, we're really in trouble. Actually, I think that's already happened. Anyway, um, okay, a uh, couple more things. I think only one more thing I'm going to go through is what if you have a list? And you have a list of a bunch of stuff. You can always do integer i in list. And if you print i, it will actually integer i in, in my list in this variable, or you could have just gotten this whole list and stick stuck it right here. It will loop through this first element, second element, third element, and go from there. Okay. What if these are some of these are integers and some of these are not integers? True, false, high, by. Okay. What if it's that? This can't be integer, right? This is gonna. This is gonna give us an error, I think. Yeah, type error. So we're going to have to use var here because it's dynamic. That will work. And it'll print every element inside of here. Okay, so you can loop through numbers. You can loop through lists. I think that's pretty much it. Um, there will be other types of loops and other things you can do with the loops. And we'll go over those in future videos. Thank you for watching.